I'm going to push you towards that. That is not going to work. And once those people get off the phone and they get away from you, it's kind of like somebody who's hypnotized or under a spell getting away from that person who cast a spell on them and like it's wearing off and they realize, wait a second, I don't want that or I don't want to do that. Now, here's what happens with follow-ups. And here's what I wrote about in Selling with Authentic Persuasion in chapter 16 is talking about avoiding the follow-up trap. And so what happens and what that means is that a lot of times salespeople get into this mode where they have the people they're talking to right now and then they don't buy today. Again, whether it's a short sales cycle, it's a long sales cycle, doesn't matter because the pattern is the same. What happens is that sale doesn't occur today, doesn't close, something doesn't happen, and then there's a follow-up. And then what happens is those follow-ups don't seem to go anywhere. People don't answer. They don't show for the follow-up appointments or the meetings that were scheduled. They don't do what they said they were going to do. Like maybe they were going to send you documents or sign something or get somebody else involved. Whatever that looks like, nothing is occurring and then you're chasing them. Um, what I have come to use for that kind of situation, especially when I see that with sales reps pipelines, is that it feels like, and the term that I use is the prospect witness protection program. So like a witness protection program where the government or somebody is taking like a witness for a trial and then changing their identity and moving them to a new town and keeping them safe so they can't be found. It's almost feels like that same thing with your prospects where literally it can feel like they have uh, gone into a prospect witness protection program where literally you call them and they don't answer. You email them and, and you literally wonder, did they change their name? Did they change their phone number? Are they avoiding me? And there's a lot of reasons why it can actually feel like that and why you could have triggered those things. And I may cover those in various um, upcoming sessions. And it's a lot of training I do for uh, salespeople and for companies to help them understand what caused that. Why does it feel like that? Why does it feel like literally they might have put in their phone under caller ID, do not answer, right? When you called, it feels like literally everything was great. And I've seen this too with many instances where somebody was the perfect fit, square peg. I have, uh, uh, you know, they're a square peg issue. I've got a square whole solution. Like it's a perfect fit. They need what I have more than anything. It's going to make a huge difference, might change their life, change their business, whatever that looks like. And not just in a, everybody should buy this mode, but like literally it will solve them, uh, solve something for them, or it will help them achieve a goal perfectly, exactly. And then they disappear. Right. And you're like, that was a done deal. That person should totally sign up or buy from me. And then poof, they're gone, right? And that's that prospect witness protection program that I've seen so many times. It's so interesting. Now, let's talk about a couple of things. What happens if you're in that? Because a lot of people, by the time I talk to them or I'm doing training or I'm advising them or their companies is they say, yes, that's happening. Like, you know, I'm reaching out to these people and no one is calling me back. The first thing is understanding that it might be too late. The things that led to you ending up with a pipeline that's in this uh, you know, follow-up trap where people aren't responding. The thing is, is that it might be too late. And I know people don't wanna hear that and it's tough uh, because the results of having people who aren't calling you back is related to what's done in those sales conversations. And if you're not following the authentic persuasion pathway and the rapport and the empathy and the trust and the hope and the next step that I'm gonna talk about next week, that fifth and final step, which is the most important one for all of this, if you're not doing that in these conversations and you're in the classic sales mode, which is I'm the hero, I'm amazing, you should want what I have, I'm gonna push you towards that, that is not going to work. And once those people get off the phone and they get away from you, it's kind of like somebody who's hypnotized or under a spell getting away from that person who cast a spell on them and like it's wearing off and they realize, wait a second, 
I don't want that or I don't want to do that. And that's what's happening, right? That's why a lot of people, they use a very gross urgency in sales because they know that if that person steps away, they're going to lose that opportunity. But that's not what I want for you all. What I want you to use is authentic persuasion and be able to sell and persuade like a professional such that people want what you're offering and you know that you have the right solution. If you're not doing that, the challenge is, is that a lot of times that pipeline of people that you're following up, you're trying to get back on board, you're trying to move them forward, the challenge is the damage is already done. The trust step wasn't done correctly. They don't feel safe. They have retreated back into their comfort zone and locked up even tighter. And what I'll tell you, and this is my feeling based on listening to calls, talking to people and just seeing it so many times, I feel like many times, and I know this, I'll say myself as a, a consumer, is there's times where I almost buy something or I think about buying something and I talk to a salesperson and then I get away from it. I, I have the ability to say no, like I use it in that moment. I don't always, but when I say no, then I step away and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I didn't buy that, right? I'm relieved. I count my blessings and I go, okay, that is amazing. I dodged a bullet by not signing up for that service or buying that thing or doing that thing. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. And that's what can happen a lot of times when it's not done properly. Not only are they gonna retreat to the safety of their comfort zone, they're gonna be grateful and thankful they didn't sign up, which when you call them is just gonna aggravate them even more, or it will also make them, it make them a more difficult customer buyer in the future because they might be even less trusting of other salespeople down the road. And I know that we've all experienced that if you've been in sales for any length of time, where it almost feels like you're inheriting somebody else's bad deeds and you're basically getting the distrust that that prospective person has in general for salespeople because of being burned in the past. And we've all had that where somebody comes at you with lots of questions, lots of issues, lots of challenges, want to know about price contracts. Oh, I never sign contracts. Oh, I never pay more than this. I would never sign up for that because of what has happened to them in the past. Thank you.